on YouTube as well. Again, if you guys are on Instagram and would like to head on over there, I'll be doing a slideshow too. So if it seems like I'm just talking to myself, it's really because I have a slide up. Okay, so let's start. K formations are also called speleothems, which is just a fancy way of saying the same thing, caves formations. So how are caves formed is kind of a really interesting process. Let's go. So on this slide, you will see, basically there's a crevice in the earth that the water starts collecting. And as the water comes down, it's slightly acidic. And so it starts dissolving the limestone rocks, the calcium in it, and it will slowly trickle down and, fi and finally it hits little cracks, little fissures. And when enough of that starts to break down and get weakened, it finally collapses. And when those caverns collapse, that's how you create a cave. So once you have a cave, the next step is going to be for the water to want to reach whatever a water table there is. So that's usually some kind of aquifer or river system. So that water wants to reach that main source. And as it goes down, it reaches these cavities. And when the water, when this water is seeping through, it's collecting things like carbon dioxide, it's collecting calcium carbonate or calcinite, calcinite, Ugh, sorry, that's not my specialty, but I'm sure someone will correct me on that. But as it's collecting this stuff, it reaches the surface of the caves, typically usually the ceiling, right? And when the water comes down, it's exposed to air again. And when the water evaporates, these minerals are left over. And as the minerals collect over time, they start for forming cave formations, speleothems. And we will go to the next slide. And as you can see, we have the stalactites. So you know there's called stalactites because they hang tight to the ceiling. And then once the stalactites form, the water still drips off and those water droplets still contain some kind of mineral. So when they drop to the ground, the water evaporates some more, and then they start developing stalagmites. So the mites, the stalagmites, stand mighty from the ground. That's how you can remember those two different um, different types of formations. And soon, I should say soon, over many, 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 many years, those stalactites and those stalagmites might merge, and those are called columns. And so. The K formations create all these really incredible formations. I'm sure you've been to like Carlsbad Cavern and some other caverns just around where maybe where you live, and you can see these really amazing things. Once you touch one, they stop growing. And so it's very important to be very respectful and not try to hang on them, touch them, or do any of that stuff. So today we're doing a very, very simple activity. Let's see, let's get me off of, sorry, everyone. Let's just one more time. Okay, let's get off this and go to this. Perfect. So now we are full screen. So today we are going to be making cave formations and it's super simple. All you need is a baking soda, two jars, some paper towels or some shredded, like a shredded up, <laughs> Eli, I'm raking deer food while you teach. <laughs> well, I'm so glad that I could entertain you. You know, always learning, right? Hi, Coney. Um, so those of you coming on, we are making K formations. And we got a comment on YouTube. Let's see it. Hi, everyone, for joining me on Facebook and YouTube. So we're doing K formations. Reiterate, uh, we are, so you need two jars full of hot water. You need baking soda and you need either paper towels or like strips of cotton. Uh, I use paper towels for this one. It works pretty well. Now, if you want the actual like dripping stalactites, then I would really recommend Epsom salt. However, they are so finicky that if you barely move them, those stalactites drop and they completely crumble. So it's not very fun for kids when they wait two weeks to have this like epic formation created only to be just broken to smithereens. So that's why I like the baking soda the most. 
Hi, everyone, for joining. Hi, Heather. Hi, Tyler. Thanks for coming. Okay, so you are going to get your hot water and go ahead and you want to start adding baking soda and keep stirring in baking soda. Believe me, you're going to use a lot, like almost a cup of baking soda in each one and keep stirring until it's completely dissolved. It's so, so, so important that you put in as much baking soda as you can. Keep stirring and if it's completely dissolved, add some more until finally you start getting a small pile on the bottom of your jar. But believe me, you will think that you have enough and you won't. So again, about almost a cup for a jar like this with very hot water. Then if you want some like really cool colors like these, go ahead and add a few drops of the food coloring as well. Tear up your pieces of paper. Let's move this guy out of the way. Here we go. Tear up your pieces of paper. Make them pretty thick. Do, do. Probably cutting them is better. And then go ahead and give them a little bit of a twist. And this is the key. Pay attention. You're going to want to make some kind of crease. And that crease is where those two, the liquids from each jar is going to meet and go in. So we want to make sure, I didn't make it long enough. They're not long enough. So you want to make sure that your paper towels, I stir fast or slow. It doesn't matter as long as it dissolves. That's the key thing is that it dissolves. So you want to make the paper towels and the pieces of cloth. So if you do use, happen to use like ripped up t-shirts, go ahead and make sure that you have enough that goes all the way to almost the bottom. You want to make sure those ends stay in. And then you're going to have a dip in between the two. Sorry, guys, I wasn't very prepared. I just ripped the paper the wrong way. And you're going to have a little bit of a loop that comes down, a little half loop. And you just want to make sure that the ends are longer than that loop right here. And just do all as many as you want. I did three or four with mine. And then you're going to let it set for about a week. And what you'll see, just like in the cave formations, oh, you guys see? So just like in the cave formations, the minerals in the water seeped through with the water into the paper towels or the cotton strips. And as the water dissolved, the baking soda was left. And that's how we started creating all those formations. This in a cave would be, would be considered cave popcorn or cave pearls. The cave pearls are a little bit more um, circular. But if you guys have any questions, that is your DIY cave formation activity for the day. Thank you guys so much. Wednesday, we will actually just be talking about animal adaptations in caves. So we'll be talking about how animals will lose their sight with because they don't need them anymore. We'll be talking about echolocation. And um, we might even talk about some really cool creatures this spring or this I say earlier this year, I went to a really cool cave in Mexico called uh, La Cueva de los Serpientes, and it's the cave of the hanging snakes. So you can go to the YouTube channel if you want and check that out. Um, basically, you see the snakes catch the bats in midair. It's the coolest thing ever. It was a really great experience. And that's it. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining. If you have any questions, please DM me. I'll be putting this on my blog. So if you guys need, have any questions about materials and that kind of stuff, you can find that. Thank you everyone for joining. Have a very great day. Hopefully you can step outside and adventure a little bit. I'll talk to you later. Bye.